I want the funk, the whole funk, nothing but funk. Here at Bigger Funky Productions Video Game Live with Funk Master V, musician, ghost hunter, hat flipper, pro wrestler, and comedian takes you on a whirlwind tour of all things funky when it comes to the Atari 7800 and new stuff too, like Nintendo Switch and all the funky stuff coming out into the future, baby. You ready to get your groove on because it's about to get funky up in here. Toot toot, baby, it's time to ride the funk train. We're going to do a little fun video. I've never done this before on the video game jive but it's too freaking hot to wear the mink coat or a funny hat i got jams on and we're looking to impress and today i got three packages in the mail um hold on it's so damn hot i gotta get me some libations so today in this box is a package from atari age and this has some conventional Atari 7800 homebrews. I'm sure you guys will be familiar with everything in this box. Um, and we'll look at it together. This box has some homebrews as well. And these, I would say, you're not familiar with. Uh, or there's a good chance that you're not. These are strange games made by a strange man and this is something i found on ebay which is a hack that even though i just bought it i kind of maybe regret it but we'll look at it anyway so let's start opening the boxes okay so we're going to start with the atari age box this will have definitely the most uh expected type of things inside of it. We've got some weirder products to unbox here in a minute. I'm gonna start with this really ridiculous knife because I can't find, I mean, look at that. What is that, supposed to kill golden unicorns or something? What is that, Bengal tigers? It's not even mine. It's not even mine. And it's not doing a good job either. What kind of knife is this? All right, let's see, there we go. Beautiful. These are always exciting when you get stuff from Atari Age because you never know exactly what's going to happen. Here's some those are things. All right, first thing. Ooh, I'm gonna do this sexily. You gotta love how Atari Age does great stuff here. We got the new game Serpentine, which is uh, in the box there. I think the box art's really cool. This is a remake of an old computer game. And uh, so this is what it says. And it looks like Snake. It looks like a colorized version of the game Snake, but I heard it's uh, very difficult. It's a very difficult game. I heard a lot of people say that it's so difficult it's not very fun to play. But we'll give it a whirl. Uh, let's see what the box says. Uh, da, 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 da. In an age where human beings have become an, an insignificant part of the landscape, mighty serpents rule the decaying corridors and pathways of a vanishing civilization. Well, this is a fun game. You have managed to tame several of the huge beasts to do your bidding and now ride forth to rid the planet of the slithery cousins. This sounds like it'd be a good movie. There's 20 different mazes. There's an option to score, save the high score on the Atari box and the high score cartridge or the XM. Single game, a uh, single player game. Your serpent is fast, but evil serpents are big, cunning, and hungry. You will need to outwit them and chomp them down to size. Occasionally a tasty frog added to your serpent's diet will help grow it large enough to take out your foe. So this does sound something similar to Snake. Arcade style designed by David Snyder for the 8-bit computer. See, I knew that. Serpentine has now been brought to life by Mike Sarina, Sarna, Sarna, Mike Sarna. Sorry about that. That's available at Atari 8. Let's see what else I got from the kids down in Texas. It's KC Munchkin in the box. That's a cool purple look. And KC Munchkin, 
uh, is known to be the Odyssey 2 ripoff of, I believe it's Odyssey 2. Uh, yeah, Magnavox Odyssey 2 ripoff of Pac-Man. And there was a big lawsuit back in the day. I've heard mixed reviews about this one as well. So all you can do is check it out for yourself. But Bob says he likes to take old weird games that don't really have a home. Looks pretty cool. I got one more thing, I think. I didn't, oh, I got this. I forgot about this. This is the, I would, I'm gonna check this out right away. This is the adapter for the uh, Sega Genesis controller. Um, when I was in, when I was starting a website and stuff back in the 2000s, my Proline controllers were rocking and rolling, and I liked them quite a bit. Um, but now that I took like a 10-year break from playing Atari games a lot, they're starting to sound like they're falling apart. So this here is an adapter where you stick this in and you put in a Sega Genesis controller. These things are much more ubiquitous in the world and uh, cheaper to find than these old Atari 7800 sticks. So that's really cheap. That's available at Atari Age. It's only like $20, I think. That's actually gonna save you money. And then I got Froggy. I didn't get the box because I don't know, the box didn't thrill me. I know they kind of made it look like um, the old Frogger box from Atari 2600. And I do dig how he kind of looks like he's insipid. He's just kind of sitting there like, whatever, man. Uh, but this is, a, again, this is a legal way to get around saying that this is Frogger for the Atari 7800. And unlike the other two games I got, this has been heralded as a freaking smash. I'll probably play this one first. Uh, and I'm excited about it. Look at that. Looks good. Good artwork. I'll probably pick up the box later on. I just didn't feel I'm a cheapskate. All right. So those are your first run Atari Age high quality games. Now we're going to delve off into some weirder type stuff that I got for the 7800. I got uh, so excited to play the games. I forgot to look in the box and I always have some cool stuff. There's a the Atari Age sticker, which I use on my logo. I hope they're not mad at that. The instruction book for Froggy. Let's see if there's anything else. They normally have some cool stuff in here. Uh, so there's the instruction book of Froggy. And again, they always, these guys who do the Atari games, man, they, especially at Atari Age, these, these are just some freaking great manuals. There's a golden title there. Points, scoring, console controls, and again, that is, I mean, that's not flimsy. That is, I'm not sure what kind of paper that's on, but that's on a really good stock, man. And that's what it looks like. That's the instructions for Froggy. Then you get a thanks for your purchase uh, little card there. I ask you to review. Uh, and it's actually kind of cool. I think it's a 7800 there instead of a 2600. It is. It's kind of neat. It's a request to review the games online. And these are all three excellent games. Dungeon Stalker, Crystal Castles, and Time Salvo. You should buy all those if you like the Atari. And here's our latest games. Pretty cool. Man, I loved this stuff when I was a kid. I'd always look, and when I got a game, I'd look at other games I wanted. But this is, uh, they've just released a bunch of stuff. Of course, this is the only 7,800 game on this list. Baby Pac-Man, which is freaking amazing. Bob did that one. De Crescenzo. But uh, and then you can see it right there. I'll do a video about that at some point. But wow, that looks pretty cool. What's that for? That's for the Jaguar. What is that? Fantasy World Dizzy. That's kind of neat. That looks good, too. That looks, that's for the 2,600. Good stuff. And then the order sheet, you don't care about that. A little, uh, doesn't sound too hot, does it? All right, I see some. Okay, got several games on this one. I and mean, I guess these are the 
instruction booklets. Look at those in a minute. I don't even really remember what I bought, but these are games from a guy named Clark Otto, better known as, uh, this packing job cracks me up, better known as Franco Dragon. And Franco Dragon makes really weird games. Here's the first one. All right, so actually a good label here. I'm actually kind of surprised, to be honest. That feels like an Atari label. Uh, Hardy Man Slapper. You got a carrot there with a cleaver. And I'm not sure if that's a sausage or a turd with a knife. And there's a ham with red eyes. What I thought was a pipe. That's actually a knife. And this is a can of Minty Door Stew. Hardy Man Slap. Beef Stew. And right here... We're going to zoom in. Clock Otto Jr. Label and idea by Keith Carlson. Those are the culprits. And if you look doo -doo 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 -doo, right here, there's a guy throwing up in a toilet. So that's what we're looking at with Hardy Man Slapper. There's the instruction booklet. Now this isn't, this is printed out on paper. And, uh, you're a micro man. Whom looks like the same guy from the Chicago basement as you traverse someone's digestive system. Why are you in there? Who knows? All you want to do is escape the slimy walls while tackling undigested foodstuffs such as roast beef, carrots, and potatoes. And there's also bosses like crabby cabbage, bad bean, and brutal broccoli. You have a fork. But if you can find one, a knife will be better for your chances. All right. Some levels may be blocks. You may have to find the gelatin key. There are also replenishing junk food such as cake and fried chicken. So there's that adventure. Game number two, Roof Pooper. Now this is thankfully censored. This is not a color. Uh... This is black and white, like the old school Atari 7800 games that came out right when the system came out. You see some people down below who are uh, upset that there's a guy on top of the roof pooping on them. This was also made in 2016. That was a great year for crazy, insane homebrews. Roof pooper. Let's see if we have an instruction booklet over here for roof pooper. We have an instruction booklet for this infamous title. Again, this is a paper. Let's see what she says here. The world is a cruel place, and you've had more than your fair share of abuse. But you now climb to the roofs of building and use your powerful anus to shoot poo at passers-by. But beware the police officers. They don't like the poopers. Well, I think that's a story as old as time itself. Game number three from this guy. The Chicago Basement. Now this label doesn't feel as good as the Hardy Man Slapper game. Maybe you got some new labels in. And there's a quote from a guy. Great, now I made myself look like an idiot. And uh, there's a particular scene happening. In <laughs> there's like a Defender machine, a deep dish pizza, a bunch of boxes. So this is probably an inside joke of something I don't get. But hell, man, I love Chicago. So we need the Chicago basement. And here's another instruction booklet here. Let's see what it says. Within the lit, well, within the city lits of Chicago, there lies a rumor of a basement full of treasure. Not just any treasure, mind you, but one that would make a classic video gamer think it's all a dream. Prototypes of game systems, unreleased games, just waiting to be picked up by somebody. And that somebody is you, as the cops come to arrest me for pooping off the roof. 
you find out the location of the Chicago basement loaded with all sorts of video game goodies that's been in storage for years. And now it's up to you to collect, but beware the basement holds spiders, centipedes, rats, and even a guy infamous for ruining a baseball championship series. Oh, I know who that is. This must be... Clark Otto must be a big-time Cub fan. And the one I'm probably most excited about is called Draker Quest. Now, if you look at his stuff online, and that's a very nice label there. Unless it feels like it. Um... This is like a Legend of Zelda type game. This is probably his best game. Um, here is, and this is actually Draker Quest Two. He he told me I'm. It's kind of confusing. I was like, what's the difference between Draker Quest One and Two? And I'm still not sure if there's a, this is a direct sequel, but this one has a password feature, which is pretty cool. And uh, I think it's I think it is different. And one day I'll probably pick up Draker Quest one when I rob a bank. Uh, let's see what the story of this is. Whoops, it's kind of sticking together there. I think old Clark was chewing some bubble gum when he put this together. Maybe right, that's the staple. That's the staple. Never mind. All right, long ago, Drakers, small dragon-like creatures, were able to use their intelligent minds to create sophisticated gadgets and even electronic devices such as computers. Unlike the rest of the world, with mostly usage of spells, Drakers were forced beyond technology. Then one day, little creatures decided to abandon their craft and return to nature. All right, we'll figure all that out later. So, all right, let's tell you what here. We're gonna we're gonna look at all of old Clark Otto's games before we go into the last game we got today. Look at all this loot. I would like to say I'm probably the only person in the world that ever got this loot, this exact loot on the same day. And so we've got another one from eBay here. I'm gonna open this guy up to make this even more unique of a haul. Can you stand it? Actually, it's packed. <laughs> better than our old buddy Clark Otto. Oh, and good thing too, I just dropped it on the floor. Now this, oh, is a strange one. Let me get it out of the wrap. Oh, neat. This is, you'll look at it at first, you'll be like, why did you buy that? But if you look closely, that's pole position three. With the gold three there. It's even got the little swanky uh, partition that you push down with your finger. Now, this was some, it's a it's a hack of Pole Position 2, obviously, which is the most derivative Atari 7800 game there is. Uh, and it's just a graphical hack, uh, I think. And then I, when I researched it, it actually changed the gameplay a little bit. Um, it doesn't look tremendous. We'll give it a spin, but it basically takes the gameplay and makes it more like Enduro, where you keep going and going and going, uh, and there's no finish to the races. Um, so we'll give that a whirl. Uh, this was very expensive on eBay, and there was a make an offer option, and I made a ridiculously <laughs> low offer, and he took it. And, um... Uh, Still probably more than I really want to pay, but hell, now that it's here, I'm glad I've got it because not a lot of people are going to have this guy. So, there you go. Bada boom. What a haul. Check that out there for you kids. I got a bonus package. I forgot about this guy. So, it's not going to be included with the other things. But we're going to pretend it's, this is the same day when it's not. We'll see what we got here. I got the still the ridiculous... Liger phone, or whatever the hell that is, some sort of mythological weapon used to kill evil gremlins. Let's see what we got. This is from the same, there's a strange seller on eBay, and he always has these weird little hacks. Let's see what we got. 
This is uh, this guy packs his products pretty well, so I'm appreciative of that. I'm taking it out of the bubble wrap as we speak. And here we go. Check this guy out. This is a loose cart of Baby Pac-Man. Now, a lot of you may know and remember that uh, Baby Pac-Man was a game that you can buy at Atari Age right now that was released by Bob De Crecenzo, Pac-Man Plus. But this is not the same Baby Pac-Man. The Baby Pac-Man that we all know and love is a hybrid game of... Um, a pinball game and a Pac-Man game. This is actually not just a weird hack that somebody has some sort of diaper fetish and wanted to make a game. Even though that's the same, this is with the yo-yo and the bonnet and everything. This is the same uh, baby Pac-Man that we know from the pinball game, the pinball video game hybrid. This hack is inspired by a company that made a game called Baby Pac-Man. Uh, and that company was UKI. And they only made two games. And this is a pretty crappy Pac-Man game. We're going to look at it here in a second. But this is uh, not the pinball game. This is something that was a very... Uh, I guess it was basically like an illegal version of Pac-Man. So that's an odd game to pick up. Uh, and uh, there's a little couple differences. But it's not exactly like the computer version that this is based on. But graphically it looks pretty close. Alright, the first thing... We're going to talk about it. This is beautiful, odd, unique adapter. You can get these at Atari Age now, but you can get them in other places too. This is called the Adladen Seagull 78. And it's pretty easy. You just plug this in um, to the Atari Pro System. And then you will plug a Sega Genesis controller into that guy. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if this is coincidence or what. I had this thing, which is some janky ass super pad, but it's got the six buttons on it. And I don't know if, I don't even know where I got this. I don't know if this worked, but it did not work. And I was like, oh, hell. So I had to go to the local. Uh, video game shop and I picked up a Sega Genesis controller and I gotta tell you this stupid looking thing I do not like how that fits in my hands this is like double wide and it's got I don't know it's like made for people with tiny hands or something I'm not sure but I, that's the best I could do is the Aussie pad good thing this thing was only like five dollars so we're gonna see if this thing works by playing a game that at one time I had the world record on. Look at this beautiful thing here. All right, there's that. This is plugged into the Pro System. Bada boom. Let's play a great game. Oops. There we go. Get some volume on that bad boy. This feels smooth. I dig it. Let's see which buttons do what here. Ooh, gotta hurry. Ooh, that was a little ninjutsu there. It's been a while. Oh, I froze it, I forgot. It's been a while since I played this game. You gotta use the C button and the B button works too. This game I forgot only has one button. I do kind of like how this feels. I have a feeling though, and it's because it's the cheap, weird, off-brand Genesis. I'm not gonna love this for every game. I'll have to get another Genesis controller. But yeah, it works. That's a relief. This thing's like 25 bucks at Atari age. I like that. Oh, have you played Atari today? All right. Serpentine. Do you worse? With a little, with a little shorty snakes. These don't look like snakes to me. These look like little centipedes or something. Some. 
This is a quiet game. And you have to eat oops, these frogs to make your snake longer. You gotta have patience in this game. This is another maze game similar to oop, oh, I pooped out one of my segments there. That's probably not good. I'm only Oh shoot. Oh no. You gotta think on this kind of game. This is not you can't go in guns blazing. Alright, see now I'm longer than these snakes and I can I can eat them in any direction. Before if I'm shorter I can eat the snakes from behind, but now I can just run over them. And I dig it. And that's the way we rule the snake school. So that's Serpentine. It's a quiet game. It's pretty fun. It's actually pretty damn difficult. But there she is. And each maze is different. I don't think it's randomly generated. So look how long. I start off this one long. But oh, yeah, I should have shut up. I was, I was doing pretty good until then. Roof Pooper. There you go. This is like Kaboom, but you're the bad guy. And you're also pooping. So, this is a guy, he's, he's, he's just angry at the world, and I don't know what he ate for dinner. Now, this is an infamous game. A lot of people talked about this. The score is pretty... It's hard to read. Was it crystal, <laughs> crystal meth carpet? But I imagine this is outside. And you see this guy here. It's kind of confusing, but this guy here in the flat hat is a cop. And the game ends. So we're just hitting these. And when you poop on them, they disappear. You must have ate something kind of nasty. But when you when you hit the cop like that, you receive a star, kind of like Grand Theft Auto. If you hit three, you now poop in jail. Game over. That may be my favorite end screen of all time. And this is insane music. This is another one of Clark Otto's games here. <laughs> Weird. So this is an odd game. Whoa, spiders. You're supposed to be, that was like an Atari. Whoa, you're supposed to collect some stuff. I was hoping Chicago Basement would be more mafia oriented or some, th something to do with drugs. But this is basically, you're, you're trying to run around getting, I guess, video game and toys. And I'm not sure, you have to kind of get, I think that was the Hulk, I think that's good, but there's these spiders you're not supposed to touch. Wow, my score's pretty good already. And you go from room to room, and there's spiders and snakes, and you go, you change the different rooms by hitting these squares, and I don't know the rhyme or reason, this game's pretty wild. I don't think there's any shooting, and I'm not sure what the hell's happening, but... This is pretty wild. And the game just glitched. So, Chicago Basement. Frog Noise, cool. So, this is Froggy. This is probably, of all the games I got, the the one that's the, the best reviewed. This one took the guy a long time. I know he made this game... Felt like he at least was working on it for 10 years, if not more. And so the frogs shoot up. And they spell Frogger. Ooh, Froggy. Now there is an Easter egg. I don't know how it works. But you can make it say Frogger if you're just OCD like that. I will say that this game is available with the Pokey Chip. And the Pokey Chip's 
as you know, if you're an Atari person, Ball Blazer Commando had these uh, titles. A lot of the homebrews do. The Pokey Chip, of course, sounds great, but this TIA sound, which is the standard crappy sound, unbelievable. Now, this is a game that doesn't have a lot of modes. It's pretty much this is the way you go. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, Bob Day Crescendo's games. There's always like, how many people do you want? And do you want the in uh, maze to be invisible? And do you want uh, somebody to punch you in the face when you die? There's all these things that make the game more difficult. This, bare bones, but it's pretty good. This music sounds very good for uh, this TIA chip. Boy, that sucked. What am I doing here? I just woke up, by the way. A lot of stuff to do. I wanted to get this out of the way. All right. We're just rocking and rolling with... Oop. I do like how the music changes. There's a little girlfriend for you. You know, get a little something, something on the side. This game's cool. The thing about it, you know, if you if you got the Frogger game for the 2600, the Frogger game for the 2600 is pretty good. This is, of course, much, much, much better. I'm gonna try to get this end one over here. That one's always the tricky one. Bada boom. This music changes every time. That's very impressive to me on a on a 7800 game. Dude, I'm rocking it. Whoops, I shouldn't have done that. That didn't matter. There's not a lot of dangers on the first board. Oh, and there's a little bug or something. Looks like a damn satanic eyeball. I'm not sure. All right, this one car is flying. Whoa. We were almost roadkill. I'm nervous on this thing here. Oh, we got the satan eyeball. pretty good and then alligators so this game's good I played it some the collision detection is a little weird for me like I was good there for a second then I fell off and sometimes like I didn't hit that car and I died so I mean I can't give it like a gold star gold star a plus 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 but it's pretty damn good all right, we're going to go back into Clark Auto's. Man, his music. I, I don't know how he comes up with that. He's rolling around on a keyboard. Hardy Man Slapper uses the same character as the guy in Chicago Basement. So for you, you guys that like sequels. Now, we are inside of a stomach, and these are like livers and... I don't know if it's an onion and a... But this game is interesting. This may be my favorite game he makes because we're inside of a stomach. You see all this pink fleshiness? And every time you hit with these insanely moving, this insane moving food, you get hurt. So we go from chamber to chamber trying to get out of this guy's digestive system. And it's like a Zelda game. If Zelda games were insane... We go from room to room, and he kind of strung a bunch here together with the same scenery. It makes you think the game's glitching. But aha! Whoa. And if you touch these things, you won't die, but they will hurt your health. I'm worried that you beat this game by being pooped out. And wouldn't it be awesome if you were pooped out onto a cop in Roof Pooper? I think that would be... That would tie Chicago Basement... Hardy Man Slapper and Roof Pooper all together be the holy trilogy of weird games for the Atari 7800. Well, I'm going to race with the onions. Let's go down. I know there's weapons you can get in here, which makes me feel bad about what this guy's been eating. I actually, of all his games, this is this is the one I enjoy. I don't know why. There's cake. See? Now, I know it's cake because I read the instruction booklet. It looked like a black triangular thing, but... Uh, well, onion got me in the leg again. Again, I don't know if I've went this way, but there are weapons in here. Ooh, that is a, what he's called in the instruction book, 
booklet, A Gelatinous Key, which you have to be a doctor to know that you had such things inside of your body. It's a quiet game. It's kind of like this sound of somebody rubbing their eyeball really hard. That kind of thing. Let's go up this side intestine or wherever the hell we are. It's pretty clean in this, guys. All right, can we go up there with the gelatinous key? The answer is hell no. I think we're back where we started. I mean, I, if it was me that made this game, I probably would have made some of these boards different. I know he's, you've got to save room, but it seems like a pretty big game. You know, I think I went this way. I'm going to be boring now. Let me out this thing. Too. Oh, there's a boss. You see that guy? I don't have any weapons, so I can't fight him. I have no idea what he is. He's a jello mold or something. I just want to show you guys the fork or the knife. This is so weird. What am I doing with my life? I'm going to die. I don't know why I keep going down like that. I'm taking it from a cranberry right in the gut every time. Ah, oh well. I'm lost in a human digestive system, which may be more scary. Look at, his, look at him doing the beep, bop, beep, bop, beep. He's kind of dancing like King George from Hamilton there. Jesus Christ, this will be fun. La -di -da 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 why am I dying? See, I wasn't even touching that guy. Weird. You die if you stay still? Who knows? Hardy Man Slapper. The game that I'm least excited about is this one. It's Pole Position 3, which is really just Pole Position. And I, I haven't played Pole Position en enough to to see what the graphical differences are. I mean, obviously there's a three up there and this has changed to San Fran. And uh, Atari 2015, Atari. Whoa, what in the hell? This thing's jacked up. All right, now. I'm channeling my inner Mario Andretti. We are rocking. I think this is the hairpin. Good. Rock and roll. I saved the world. Whoa. I'm enjoying this Genesis controller to a degree. I hate this controller. Okay, I qualified this time. I got second. Okay, I didn't qualify the first time. Now, I think you can just keep going. Look at all this glitchy shit. Not a fan of this. I, I, I paid too much for this. I don't need... You know, pole position 2 is okay. I don't need a pole position 2 that lasts a long time. And I, I swear to God, I thought these uh, signs were supposed to read different things. So anyway, all right, Casey Munchkin. Now this looks like a junk game, but there's a lot to it to like. I mean, this was an Odyssey 2 uh, classic. People that had the Odyssey 2 liked it because it actually was Pac-Man, but there was a lot to it that, that was interesting. Um, we'll just go, the, the oops, I'm this ugly ass thing, I died. And that's the thing. You uh, only have one life, man. There's not a lot of pills and or dots or whatever you want to call them. And I died. And the game's over. He's, now you see this bunch of question marks. That's, uh, I didn't know what that was. I thought it was like a code. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, like a password or something. I had no idea. But that actually was the initials screen. All right, I keep dying here. So let's let's change. There's different mazes here. Maze three is unique because you can't 
you can't freely go from one place to the other without going through the tunnel or going through one of these little places that uh, changes. So once you pick a maze on this game, um, you're stuck playing that maze for the for the the duration. You can't. Uh, shoot like the, the maze doesn't change it's gonna be tricky <gasps> okay so what can you do with this you can put your name in it I'm going the wrong way a lot of symbols thanks for that Watching a guy put his name on a remake of an illegal game. Are you living your best life? Vinny, let's do it. Alright, it starts automatically. You don't have to hit the button again. It's kind of weird. But Casey Munchkin. Oh, and let's go over this, of course, because Bob did it. Invisible mazes and stuff. Of course, I think that was on the original game. This is pretty much a, a faithful remake. But check this out. You can do random mazes where the mazes change. And then you can also do level editor and make your own maze to play. And you can kind of sit there and think, hey, man, how can I make this so painfully easy that I can get a big score of 131? That's the only thing about this game is, like, wh why, why are the scores, like, Hey, I got a high score today of 34. And it's not, you know, throw some zeros behind that stuff. Don't be stingy with your invisible, meaningless video game currency points. So you can kind of make a nice little thing. You also make maze, uh, maze tunnels. And then you go down here, bada boom, play. Oh, going back to the main screen, and then this is clear. And we're playing a game we just made in seconds. So very good. Um, oh, stop. I was just scooping around. A very easily made. Oh, this, I'm going to get you. Level editor. I'm, I'm impressed with the level editor, to be honest with you. It's very easy to use. It's fun. It's quick. And you can figure out ways to make it easy on yourself. And this thing kind of glitches when it's going to the next screen. Maybe the original did that. I don't like that either. There's too many, too many of these games that are glitching like crazy. I don't like it. I feel like the system's going to crash. So, you know. A lot of people have, have remarked that they don't like the teeth on the Casey Munchkin character. And there is a way. I don't know how to do it yet. There is a way. Whoa! To, uh, oh man, I blew it. There's a way to make the old graphics flip back, which I think is pretty cool. And again, that's Bob being a hero. Bob does some awesome stuff with these games. All right, we're back to Clark Otto here. Draker Quest. This is the game that he's the most proud of. And again, the creatures are just flying all over the place. But you got a gun. That's, you don't have to find a knife. or and you kind of hold the button in and, you know you can kind of be the guy from who look at that I did who so there's a tree the graphics I would say are arguably better than the other things he's done there is a password feature and again the health are these things kind of rub up against you and kind of drain your health this is pretty congruent with how he makes games again this is like hardy man slapper all right. Ooh, squeeze in there. You gotta, you gotta start working out if you wanna get through them holes there, boy. I'm not sure that's just crazy looking stuff. All right, so it's an adventure game. And 
it's a quest, and I'm sure you have to go pick something up. I like the map a little bit better than Hardy Man Slapper. These are trees, and there's like some purple trees. And the enemy AI, and there's some dead ends here too, but the enemy AI could be a little bit, he could work on that some. Oh, look at this, kind of neat. Kind of neat. Again, the same sound effects as Hardy Man Slapper, just it's, it's like somebody rubbing their eyeball. I know there's like temples, you know, it's very Zelda esque. Gosh. Ooh, this may be a temple. This actually reminds me of E.T. Here we go. Whoa, a lot of crazy stuff in here. Aggressive bugs. This is a weird color scheme you went with, my friend. So he does a good job with these mazes, I think. I think he does a, a really... I'm impressed with that. A couple of brick walls here and the temple. So I, you know... If you're interested in, in Clark's games, he goes by Franco Dragon on the Atari website. These things, of all these, I like Hardy Man Slapper the best, which is weird. I didn't think I would, but it's just because it's so gross. And Roof Pooper is a sentimental favorite. All right. Ooh, let's see what this does. Oh, we left. Oh, we're... Oh, man, he put a little trick on us here. Sneaky, sneaky. Now this is a strange game called Baby Pac-Man. And it's not Bob De Crescenzo's Baby Pac-Man that we all know and love as one of the best homebrews for the Atari. It's the game that combines this lovely nonsense of eating dots with ghosts who are pissed off about it and a pinball game. You know, just like the Lord intended. Pretty good game. This is not this game. This baby Pac-Man is a graphical hack of Miss Pac-Man, but it's not just some weird thing some guy came up with. It's actually a Commodore 64 remake from UKI Software, and it's pretty accurate to a degree on what the Commodore 64 ripoff. There's so many of these ripoff. Pac-Man games. We'll play a game of it here. But the main difference is that you know, the ghosts look like they need Prozac. They got those little faces like they're being forced to chase Pac-Man or something against their will. And the dots the power pellets here are in an odd spot. It's a new map. And again, I didn't pay a lot for this. I don't know if I'd ever need this in my life. And the other thing is too, I think in the real Commodore 64 game, the ghosts start on the corners and they don't start in a communal box. Isn't that exciting? So anyway, there is the fake evil baby Pac-Man. And that's all the games that I got. and. The adapter, which I think I'm going to enjoy the adapter. I just got to get a, a better... Ooh, they're going faster now. I got to get a better uh, Genesis controller than this guy. Let's see if I can clear the maze. I doubt it. i try. Yeah, because I suck. See you guys.